guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. Today's video is sponsored by Hoselink. They've got retractable hoses that are really quite amazing. We've got a whole bunch of them around the garden and we are gonna be giving one of them away to one of you guys. So to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment below this video, uh, shipping to 48 states. the 48 states. So you can comment even if you don't live in the States, if you happen to know somebody who lives in the States, maybe they, they, they can, can ship, ship it to you. It to you. <laughs> yeah. It has to be a nice comment. Yes. We're not going to be picking anybody that was mean. We do pick comments randomly, but if we pick a random mean one, we're going to toss it out and pick another random one. Okay. So anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Let's, <laughs> so funny. Thank you, Hoselink, for sponsoring today's video. Uh, it's been a really nice week. We've had kind of weird weather on and off, like overcast, hail, rain, but like it's enough, been good. enough to keep, you know, the plants saturated. Oh, just so. Nice. Well, and we hit fertilizing perfectly. Yeah. Where it wasn't like, you know, gully washer kind of rain. Mm -hmm. It was just nice, nice gentle, rain, gentle rain. rain. Yeah. That's what you don't want is you don't want to fertilize and then just like have it wash away. It's like, yeah. oh, Agreed. what a waste. Yeah. Total waste of time <laughs> and money and fertilizer. It was perfect. And we got a bunch of stuff done, mm -hmm. which brings me to our first video, which was planting a bunch of ground covers and perennials. I just had a gator full of stuff. Some of the new ground, ground covers we picked up down at the garden center. Sedum we had wintered, overwintered behind the greenhouse. Some iris, uh, some semper vivums. I can't remember what else. But I felt like it was a really good load of stuff to get in the ground. Uh, so Marty said, so what zone are you in? What city, what state? No help without that information, which is probably true. I don't think to, to add that in. It but should pro we need to add it to the description of the videos somewhere that is like kind of a legitimate thing because i've it watched is. videos where i've been curious so i'm like i'm not a subscriber i have no idea anything about them but you want to know if it's applicable yeah to, your, to yourself so I'll, yeah. I'll do some i'll do like a little about me section or something in the description okay that sounds yeah, good. it's probably the best spot for it. We are in Eastern Oregon. We're high desert zone six. Amy Deed said, you are so smart to use an auger. I'm in my mid fifties and my hands sometimes ache from all the digging and weed pulling. Question, do you have an edge? Do you have to edge your beds every year to keep the grass from creeping in? Is it better to cut in at an angle or straight down? You can, I mean, it might help to do it once a year with like the step edger. Uh-huh. But it's really just a matter of trimming every week. Mm -hmm. You're probably, if you have grass, you're probably trimming with a weed whacker anyway. So just put it on its side and trim vertically. Mm -hmm. You could go at an angle if you wanted to, if you like that look. But mm -hmm. we do it vertically. Keeps and it in check. Yeah. Like, I don't really feel the need might to... Might have to pull a little bit of grass that yeah, kind of creeps in. Occasionally, but not a ton. Like, sometimes there'll be a little grass that's like, you've got your edge, and then there's a little grass that'll grow like a couple inches away from the edge. Yeah. Into the flower bed. Mm -hmm. You might have to pull that. Yeah. Brandy said, do you ever worry about the ground cover choking out other plants besides weeds, of course? Uh, you know, I don't really worry about it. I've had my fair share of mishaps when it comes to ground covers. Like, you know, in our very first garden spot, right after we got married, we were renting a townhouse that had this little tiny garden space, and I planted one mint plant in there. And that, while some of them are... I guess consider ground covers because they stay really low. Uh, all mint plants will spread like wildfire, and that was a hard one. Um, I planted sweet woodruff once, so in my parents' garden, it was gorgeous, and I thought, I need that in my garden because it's perfect. It stays nice and compact. It just very, um, not unruly, like it was very tidy, I guess. But theirs was planted in fairly deep shade. And I just thought that when I planted it in our garden, where it got sun for a good portion same of the same. day, that it would be the same. And that stuff grew so tall, it didn't look anything like I wanted it to look. When it gets really tall, then it kind of like gets a little, like it looked messy to me and it took over. It just spread everywhere. Um, so I've had a few things take over that I didn't really want to have take over. And sometimes it's trial and error because you could look in somebody's garden and have it be this beautiful little dainty plant. And you put it in yours and it just like takes off and explodes. You know, there are some though that are just amazing, like the Veronica, like Lamium is an amazing ground cover. Lamiastrum is also really good. Chamomile or Shamomile. Shamomile. <laughs> it's also really good. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't really worry about it too much. If it's if something starts to become unruly and it becomes a headache, then out it goes. Shara said, long time watcher, first time commenter. Last year I bought biotone fertilizer but forgot to bring it in and it got wet. Can I still use it? If not, what's the best way to get rid of it? I would just use it. I've done that several times. If you can stand the smell. Well, it depends. A biotone that's been just lightly wet, like wet, wetted down. Sure. 
uh, watered down, I don't know, rained on, that's in our case, um, it'll like clump together and it'll come out of the bag in clumps, which is kind of a pain and you kind of have to use something to break it up. But if it's been like deluged with water and then left to sit at the bottom of a pallet, like some of our bags, mm -hmm. it smells like something died. Yeah. That's not happened very often. The first time it did, I was looking around like legit. I just thought something is dead out here. Yeah. What is that? And I searched all over the place to find out it was my bag in the back of the gator. And I did toss that one because there was no way. I, I did not want that perfuming the air. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I fertilized the lawn la last year, the year before, with a bag that smelled like death. And in my mind, I was kind of like, you know, I wonder if this is going to be like extra good for the lawn. Yeah. I, there's a part of me that just thinks like, the stinkier the worse, it is. Yeah, the worse it smells, the better it must be. Right. For the <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Olive said, did the sumacs overwinter well in the dirt lands? You know, time will tell. They look good. They look like my other sumacs do. So we'll see. They barely I'll had bet. any root system. I'm I'll bet they'll take. I mean, I was surprised they were standing upright. Because you guys saw the root systems on those. I mean, they were just like these tiny little things. I Sumacs, I feel like you could just cut them at any point and just stick it in the ground. As long as it had some moisture, it would just... Perhaps. Yeah, that's like. probably true. <laughs> uh, Rebecca said, do you buy your plants and then go out and look where they f will fit? Or do you go out and see something is needed in a spot and then decide what plant will work in that spot? Both. I think a good mixture of both. There are some spots like out in the South Garden, we're starting to get full like with big things that are going to get big. Yeah. But there are a few little spots where I think that needs an evergreen. And I just haven't decided which one yet. So I leave those spots open until I find the right plant. When I'm doing perennial drifts, Depending on if I need to, I don't know, oftentimes I, I know what color I want to do next. You know, there's one corner I'm just doing with pinks, purples, and whites. And then there's other areas where I like to just kind of make sure it's a good mix and I'm not putting two purple things next to each other. That There's like a pink and a white and a purple, maybe a pale yellow and an apricot and then kind of repeat. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but there's times where I fill up the gator like this time and I had no idea where anything was going to go. I just go out there and find a spot. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the South Garden is that we don't have a plan. There's zero plan out there. It's just like toss it out there and see how it comes together and hopefully it looks good in the end. And it's coming along. I feel like you have enough. I don't know. Some people, they make it just seem effortless and you're kind of one of those people. Like um, if you watch... Bob Ross paint he the way he explains painting is like oh yeah you just do it man you know <laughs> and but it's like no if I if I tried to attempt what you're doing it would just look like total trash and I feel like you're a little bit the same with with gardening it's like oh yeah just no plan we're just going out there willy-nilly but it's like okay well but hold on maybe there's more some, of one like, in my natural brain talent I don't know that the rest of us don't possess, <laughs> possess. I think that I think that you or I could stand back and be like, okay, I'm scanning this bed. What does it need? And you would be able to say, I, I think suppose. we need an evergreen here. Yeah. Or I think we need something that's lower right here. And then you just start looking for plants that meet those requirements. You yeah. know what I mean? I think most I think most people could probably stand there and be like, it's missing something. Yeah, if most what people is it really think about it yeah. and they try not to put similar textures right next to each right. other, similar colors right next uh -huh. to each other. But also, I guess understanding a little bit of color to where you're not putting like contrasting or like uh, colors that will fight with each other yeah like pink and like pink and red and or red or pink, soft pink and a hot orange <sighs> okay I can't do that <laughs> oh yeah landscape plans just don't do it for me in fact my mom and I were just um, talking about that today because we need to sit down and get serious about their landscape plan my mom wants to kind of do that together and I told her look <laughs> Here's the deal. I'll help you with your landscape plan. You come over and help me with my front flower beds. And that way we can both bounce ideas off of each other. We're like set a day to do it. And I don't know. I feel like that front flower bed though, I think I know what I need to do. Uh, it's just a matter of like being brave enough to do it. Yeah. Because it's going to require pulling up a bunch of the lawn past the crab apple, mm -hmm. possibly removing the crab apple because it's full of blight. Every yeah. year it's full of blight and we fight it. I don't even spray it anymore because it never really worked um could we move it do you want to move it i don't want to move a tree that deals with no, that yeah that's true i don't know i feel like we could do something better up there well we talked about putting a pond over there but <laughs> it'll get algae <laughs> <laughs> you notice i haven't shown the pond for a little while we're on uh we're on chris schreiner's schedule oh, you called me today i totally forgot to call him back oh we're on a schedule for a, a big clean out 
um, they said there would be a, uh, a period of time where we would be like balancing the ecosystem and we would get algae. So they prepped us. They knew, we knew it was going to happen. I went and tried to get some algae out today. I actually got a lot of algae and it like didn't seem to, to make an impact. To dent, yeah. You have to spend a lot of time getting it out yeah. right now. Growing Dreams Homestead said, love seeing you splitting plants to make them really stretch. Oh yeah, in that video with the ground covers, there was a couple of them that were so rooted in all the way around the can that I felt like they were good to cut in half. Well, the one I cut in half, the Star Creeper, and then the Veronica I cut in quarters, which that made it stretch huge. Uh, what other plants can you split, Salvia? Yes, I have some established perennials that are getting really big. Yeah, a lot of perennials benefit from being divided. A lot of times, like especially ornamental grasses, they'll start to just have like a ring around the outer part that's nice and then the center dies out or they'll flop over a lot easier because they just simply need to be divided. Um, so a lot of those much more mature things, yeah, definitely split them up and stretch them around your garden. Give them to friends, it's kind of fun. Rose Torn said, how spaced apart are your emerald green arborvita? They look good. Um, I think you are probably meaning the North Pole arborvita, very similar plant, but I don't know that we have any emerald greens. They're all North Poles along our fence Yeah, I lines. think we have all North Poles. Yeah, and I think they were spaced about four feet from center. Whatever it was that we chose, I wish we would have gone a little bit closer together. Yeah, I think we were trying to take the average because they say they grow three to five feet uh, wide, rather. So we thought, well, four feet. We'll go yeah. right in between so they're not too close, but they're not too far. And you know, they're creating a beautiful wall. I mean, if yeah. you look at this row of arbs, and that's kind of been your baby. I mean, yeah. you kept them looking really nice. I look down that and I just, I'm like, this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted this beautiful yeah. green wall and that's what they do. Maybe just a little bit taller. Well, yeah. Yeah. But they'll get there. Yeah, Because they're, I mean, what are they right now? Eight? No, they're Nine? probably closer to 10. Oh, you think point. so? Yeah, so we'll probably just get a few another, more feet. Another few feet. Well, it's like good. 12 to 15, right? Yeah. So. 10 to 15, I think. It's, oh, jeez. I know. I always think, I always assume it's just a little bit more yeah maybe we'll see uh, next video was planting a weeping alaskan cedar sedum and hydrangeas plus transplanting a massive mature hibiscus that root ball was a beast i had i got it out of the hole but barely you were like do you want me to come get it because you were standing there <laughs> next yeah. to me when i was digging i was like no i'm gonna get this thing out of the hole but i got it taken over to the gator you know when you get into a project and you just like do not want to admit defeat that's where i was at because i was kind of mad at the root ball being so heavy but i couldn't get it up into the gator so aaron had to lift it up to into the gator and back down in the dirt lands when we got that all that it's whoops it's spot all prepped uh, but the weeping Alaskan cedar, the variety is Jubilee. It stays a little bit more narrow than the traditional weeping Alaskan. And I just think they're all so beautiful, so architectural and like, graceful looking. We planted the lemon jade sedum near some reminiscent pink roses out in the south garden. And then the hydrangeas were the little, not little lime, they were the lime light primes. I hate those names all yeah. kind of jumbled up. Anyway, when we took the hibiscus out, it opened up room for two more um, hydrangeas on the far end and then one to fill in a gap toward the other side. So Anna said, if I remember correctly, you have a weeping cedar planted close to your house. How aggressive is the root system? Would they damage the foundation of your house? You know, we have a, a weeping white spruce, which is a, a little bit different. The weeping Alaskan, I probably would not put right up next to my house because they'll typically get um, like what, 25 by 12 was this one. The traditional ones get 25 by 15. That's a pretty sizable. I mean, if it was like 10, 15 feet away from the house, which is not that far, I would say I wouldn't be worried about it, but I would not plant it as close as I put our weeping white spruce, which that one grows anywhere from 10 to 15 feet tall and only like three to four feet wide. So it stays a lot smaller. Um, so it's just naturally not gonna have as big of a root system. And it depends like on the culture of the plant, like it depends on where it's at. Um, some will get upwards of 15, some will stay closer to the 10 foot. The leader of ours broke out, not this winter, but last winter because we don't have any gutters on that side of the house. I don't know why. There's not that much watershed on that side of the house. It was that's just why. enough. I think it was just enough to drip oh. on the top, right on the top of that plant. And it formed a big chunk of ice. And the whole thing just like tipped and cracked. That's a bummer. The leader, I know. The rest of the plant looks okay though. Christine said, do you go back in and water the items you just planted or are your drip lines already turned in for the season? Our drip lines are not on yet. 
Um, and I do go around and water them. But at this point, when we don't have our water on, I have to go find a frost-free faucet, which is oftentimes not nearby the plants. And I have to lug watering cans and buckets around. It's just kind of a more labor-intensive, tedious job. So I usually leave that out, which maybe I should leave it in sometime because I do. And maybe I'll just mention that. We'll go back through and water everything. Well, make sure it's like watered in. That time, I think we went around in the evening. I think that was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday yeah. we went around and watered stuff that I planted earlier. Uh, Rosie said, did Aaron know you were planting a tree without him? Planting the tree. Oh, the weeping Alaskan cedar. I don't think you I, didn't. You told me, you showed me afterward. I you did. were all proud of yourself. I know. I love that tree. You know, most of the time when I'm planting like that, I'm filming myself. So I'm out, out there all by myself and just moving the camera around and and such so oftentimes you don't even know where things are what i'm going to be planting or anything i'm doing that day and so no. th in the evening we go around and i'll show them the things that i just planted angela said you can't just say aaron is digging up this tree without explaining <laughs> <laughs> we all want we want all the details um also could you have divided that hibiscus root ball i'm sure we could have um the tree, oh, you were clawing away at the soil around the base of that linden tree. Yeah, I think we got a little bit too much. We either planted it too deep or we like some mulch got over the top of like close to the trunk. Yeah. So I was trying to move it away. And basically. you did a bunch of them. Yeah, all the trees out there in the South Garden. Mm -hmm. I it was just, I used a little cultivator. I was just trying to get the kind of soil away. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we probably, see, that's why you got to plant plant them high well it's kind of true if you plant it right at soil level pre-mulch then you have to be very careful about like you can put yeah. a skiff over the top just to blend it in but then it gets washed away a lot easier when you're planting your root ball up high and then mulching up you know to that level yeah then you know you're not i was telling you that i was like i feel like a lot of people really misunderstand when i say plant it high because i am planting high but i'm also Counting planning, on that I'm, layer. I'm counting on bringing in a couple inches of mulch. Mm -hmm. And when you bring the mulch in, all of a sudden it's not, it's not high anymore. Right. It's I mean, it's, it's like, it might be barely above, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, like a half an inch above soil level mm -hmm. after the mulch is brought in. So yeah, it's like, cause if you plant at soil level and then bring mulch in, well then you just plant it in a concave. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you want, great. It's not what I want. Yeah, not usually the, that great for the trees. Yorkie said, love the weeping cedar, but the boxwood hedge looks so out of place stopping in the middle of the bed. I do agree with that. Are you planning to remove it at some point? Yes. Yes, we are. And I don't know what's stopping me at this point doing that. I, I could probably do that because the overall shape of that bed isn't going to change when we, right. you know, when we do overhaul sort of the Persephone garden area. Um, but at some point we do plan on removing that little picket fence in front of that garden. Maybe. I don't know. I like it there. The picket? Really? I yeah. Oh, wow. I like that it, it differentiates it between like garden and driveway. But Paul and Aaron did get out into the new lawn area, you know, just beyond there. And mm -hmm. they mapped out where the paddocks are going to be and where the barn is going to be sometime down the, the road. But I feel like when we start, uh, planting that area up and tearing things out over there. Um, I feel like that's when that area will change. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. It's making me hold on. I think, I think I just grasp onto certain things that like the boxwoods are largely healthy. And so I don't know, most of the time when we get rid of something, I'm like, okay, that's good. I'm glad yeah. we did that. And you know, voice of reason <laughs> back, back over well, there. But. I mean, I think, you know, Paul and I could rip those boxwoods out and just mulch it. And you'd be like, Oh, that's what that space needed. <laughs> and you're probably right. You're probably right. I don't know. I just, I get to a point where I do start getting overwhelmed when um, there are too many irons in the fire. I feel like I just need a year where things aren't ripped out. Yeah. I just need a year to go in and plant things and fill in the holes that we currently have. And I actually have the, the brain space and the mm -hmm. energy to do that. But when we've got things just like going, you know, tearing out here and there and everywhere, I just feel like everything is just, Ugh. <laughs> and then I feel like I can't, I can't grasp any idea in my, in my head. I don't know. Yeah. So well, hence the random boxwood hedge will probably stay for a little while. Yeah. Cassandra said, waiting to see your plans for the area around the fountain in the front. Do you plan to plant that area up this spring? We are going to tackle that area this year. See, that's one of the things. Like We I, are going to get uh, concrete under there. I, the guy yeah. uh, got the bid. I said, yes, let's do this thing. Um, so I'm just waiting on him to give me a date. 
What he means by that is we're going to take that fountain apart and he's going to pour this, this guy's going to pour a, a proper base for the fountain. So it's just like perfectly level. level. Um, the electrical's right there. Like everything is just going to be nice and like tidy and set up nicely. Yeah. It can't sink at all. That sort of thing. Jojo Jones said, everything looks gorgeous. Thank you. I do have a question about the kneeling pad I ordered. The first day you posted that you were now selling them, I ordered one. I still have not received it because they were on pre-order. We actually do not have them yet. They should be here like soon, soon. Uh, but they are they were just pre-orders. Um, so, sorry. Um, Which, I mean, I know a couple people like did misunderstand. They emailed and uh-huh. we just you know, gave them a full refund if you know there was some misunderstanding. So, uh-huh. if that's the case, just shoot us an email if you do want a yeah. refund or if you want to wait. You know, yeah. great. But. They are awesome, though. You guys, I've been using them now for well, this whole growing season so far. And I just... I think you guys are going to love them. So thank you to everybody who has ordered one. And yeah. We have more we coming. We do have a lot more coming. I don't think we're going to do the pre-order thing again. Uh, it was it was a little bit of a nightmare, to be honest. Because I, um, I think a lot of people just order quickly. And you can say it's a pre-order. You can write it in as many Multiple places spots. as you, you say think. It. Yeah. Um, aside from like we... We didn't have like a flashing screen that was like, before you order this, it <laughs> yeah. is a pre-order. Yeah. You know, and so it it created like tons of customer service emails and calls and stuff. I think because of that, it, we'll just wait till we... Because <laughs> we of that, can... we have a new customer service representative starting next Monday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, um, so the store, so Ken's doing the store and then by like the end of, like in two weeks, there'll be four full-time people working on the store stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like it's growing. Which is amazing. You guys are so awesome. Thank you for the support, for sure. I'm really sorry, though, about that. You know, yeah, I feel bad because that people I misunderstood. Feel, I feel like I've done that before. You know, sometimes you just get excited and yeah. you want to, you know, be supportive, which was so awesome of you. Um, and it's it's easy to miss details like that. Next video is planting ranunculus and setting up the very best low like low caterpillar tunnel that I've ever set up before. Not that I've set up a tremendous amount, but this one was so easy. And I bought it from Never Sink Farm. Um, tools. And, tools. Never Sink Farm Tools. Mm, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Never Sink Tools. You might be right. I don't remember. We linked it down below. But they had a reel on either Facebook or I don't know where I was at, but I saw this reel and I was like, that. I need that in my life. So I got on their website and ordered one. Never Sink Farm neversinktools.com. See, we were both So you right. probably type in either one. Sure, but and you would get both. there. Anyway, it's just like, it's like kind of plug and play. Like you just da, 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 put your fabric on. It was so easy. Um, and then the ranunculus looked really good. We got them all fit in the area, but I took my time. Like we, I measured everything out. It's, everything's very tidy. I had to rerun the drip, uh, drip tape. It's just all very, yeah. I don't normally measure stuff. So that to me is like... <laughs> I feel so accomplished. I did have to have Aaron come out and look at it. He was like, you're off by like six inches. <laughs> so I did have you to were move too. it. We cut that out of the video. <laughs> well, you know what? But I think I, did I edit that video? I don't remember. Yes, you did. I think I edited it and I, so I cut it out because yeah. it wasn't. Thank you for that. You, you made me look so good in that video. <laughs> like I just to had it together with my measurements. But I know my weakness. That's also, why I had you come out. I noticed that you cut out a section because you were like, you were basically like an infomercial to me. You were telling me like, this is amazing. And you were kind of like, it does I, this and this and this. Was, but, but I wasn't looking at the... I, well, I was just holding the camera kind of like as you were... I didn't know like, you I didn't know you were filming that though. I was yeah. like, just, this is amazing. <laughs> but I saw you cut that part out too. Because you were like, you were going hard on like, I know. everyone needs to have one of these things. I know. It was a little much when yeah. I watched it back. Uh, RSK Prod said, I tried to pre-sprout my ranunculus about three weeks ago. I soaked for three and a half hours and put some soil on them, and then I put them in my garage where it's cool, but they should be protected from freezing temps. So far, no growth at all. What did I do wrong? Any chance they could still root? Boy, if you're not seeing any roots yet, put them somewhere warmer. I mean, that's the only thing that I would say to do. Make sure that they're staying moist but not soggy so they're not rotting. If you don't get any action after that, you can toss them in the ground if you want to, but they might just be bad if you're not seeing any roots come out. Jessica said, I'm so interested in the drip tape as I have two really long, really straight flower beds with edging, so I'm not ready to redo them. How many in- inches does drip tape water either side of the holes? Depends on how long you run them. Like that's, I, I will say that we have tried the drip tape with emitters every six inches and the emitters every 12 inches. And even though like in the dahlia rows, I'm planting my dahlias every 12 inches, 
we pulled all of the 12 inch spacing and put in six inch spacing because I felt like the coverage was so much better and my plants were happier and we didn't have to run it quite as long. So it 100% has to do with how long you run it. Yeah. It'll sub out farther and farther. And yeah. also keep in mind too, that like, um, it's, it it's goes like a, like a kind of a triangle mm-hmm. or like a cone shaped a little bit. Mm-hmm. So if you see how far it's subbing on top, it's probably going out farther down yeah. below. Yes. Brian said, I purchased Ranunculus. I'm in zone 9B. I did everything that you do, and I potted up some and some in the ground. My question is, because I know nothing about them, how long do they bloom? When should I expect them to be done blooming? They usually start blooming about 90 days after you get them planted. Um, it's just, it'll vary a little bit depending on if you did the pre-sprout process or, you know, if you had them in a warm spot before you planted them out. But it's typically right around 90 days. And I want to say that they're in bloom for some weeks outside because, you know, the plant will continue to push blooms, um, but they last for, they last forever. The flowers last forever in a vase, like upwards of two weeks or more in a vase if they're harvested like at peak, which is not when they're fully open. It's when they're kind of marshmallowy, like they're all, they're kind of closed like this and you can kind of do this thing and they've got like a marshmallowy bloom and then they will open in the vase huh. and they last a really, really long time if you swap water and all of that business. Shelly said, is there a link where you got the fabric and the rubber things that held the fabric down? Great idea, I've been looking for something similar um yeah we had a link below that video neversinktools.com no uh l said wow another saturday feels like a gift this time of year we just have so many projects going on that it's easy to post a lot more and we've talked been talking recently about how next like late fall into winter i think we might like scale back back the amount of videos just yeah. during the winter months and so, cuz we've been doing five videos a week plus the recap even through the winter mm-hmm. and while you know we make it happen cuz there's still things going on it would be nice just to like maybe we'll go somewhere warm next January <laughs> you know what i mean yeah like there's maybe- also there's also some like projects that i think both you and i want to do that require a little more production yes and they, they'll take multiple days to do. And so I think yeah. if we did like three videos a week, mm-hmm. um, maybe three videos plus the recap. Yeah, not that, permanently, but just Just for like during the, the winter. winter time. Yeah. I think we could do some that we've kind of been wanting to do, but yeah. are, are just harder because they just take a lot more work. Right. And, you know, there's days where like I just need days to think, like think and putter and kind of come up with You know, I've got like a little vision in my mind of what I want to do with like a creative project. You like how we used to do fairy gardens with water features and things. And sometimes it would take a day to gather supplies, kind of think through the design, see if it's going to actually work. And then the next day you try to execute. And sometimes even then you don't execute very well and it takes the third day to get it all the way done. Um, And I think that you used to really like doing, especially like decorating projects, decorating the house or things like that. Yeah, but it's so time consuming. It's really time consuming, yeah. but you enjoy doing it. I think like, I want to encourage you to do the things that you like doing and don't feel like you've got this time constraint. Like, oh, well, yeah. we've got to stay on this schedule. Like if we skip days, that's totally fine. Like mm-hmm. do what you like, do what you enjoy, keep it fun. Mm-hmm. And you know. Yeah. There you Not go. that it hasn't been fun. We're just like thinking forward, you yeah. know, and. I used to love all the decorating projects, but I don't love them as much when I feel like the pressure to Mm -hmm. like, I gotta get it done when it's light outside, you know? That gets to be a little bit, oh, but this time of year, it's like, I could do multiple projects in a day. Yesterday, I filmed two videos. Well, you have like, the sun is out like literally twice as much. Right. You know? Yeah. Mug Darius said, where is the cart you use to unreal the drip tape from? I don't know where is that from. I think I ordered that from Home Depot. Really? Yeah. Because it is handy, handy. It's just a... Uh, when well, you like can make it wider, or I ended up, and I don't know if I, it showed it all the way, um, but I ended up making it real narrow. So it kind of pinched that really skinny roll. They sell those for all sorts of things. Drip tape. I mean, like electricians use them. Unspooling any kind of wire, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. Okay, next video was elm tree removal, new stump by the pond, and moving a honey locust tree. We started that video out trying to move that raised bed with the espalier in it with the tractor. So disappointed in that tractor. Did not happen. Um, So we abandoned that project, but right after that, the tree crew showed up from Natural Tree and they got those two, actually one of them was a mulberry. The other one was an elm. Both were, I mean, you saw them, like falling apart trees with multiple branches, like trunks cut off at the base. Um, So we got that handled. Our neighbors are thrilled that they are gone, which is great. (laughs) 
Um, and uh, that we makes both you, got thank you texts. Yeah, we did. <laughs> like, thank you for doing that, which makes you feel good. Like yeah. you just did something to benefit, not just yourself, but somebody else. And well, I hope they like the new trees when they go in. Well, I wanted to ask them, like, is there anything in particular that you haven't been able to fit into your garden, but you'd really like to look at? Oh, sure. Like maybe they like a magnolia tree or something like that, you know, and maybe we can back one so that they've got this nice... Yeah. I, don't I want know. a full hedge though, so like they're gonna get evergreens either either. Yeah, but they'll be able to see some deciduous, pretty yeah. stuff too. So and they like all of it. They they're really good gardeners, and their garden is always like pristine. Yeah. Yeah. And then we did um, cut the well natural tree cut the big stump from the chicken coop area in front of the new red barn, and we moved that over to the pond area. And Paul and Aaron had ended up having to get it in place. I tried. I couldn't even. I couldn't even, like, nudge it. What did we guess that it was? Like 300 pounds? I don't know. It felt so heavy. I bet it was Well, I mean. Oh, so Yeah, it could so have been heavy. four. And then we moved a Shade Master Honey Locust tree, which we planted last year before we knew we were going to buy this property. And um, it was right in the, the area where the new lane needs to go. So we got that out. Chad never got here last week. So yeah. hopefully he gets here this week at some point. We're here in the middle of the week. I'm like, yeah. hello. Um, but it's all prepped and ready to go for him. Jan said, everything is coming together and looking great. Question, did the guys take away the trees or did you keep it to use as firewood? They chipped, or they uh, sent most of it through the chipper. Yeah. And we have it all. So they dumped it in some piles. And we'll use and we're we're going to use it tomorrow, actually. Um, Melissa said, I had totally forgotten about the extra grassland space. How are you going to figure out where to put your focus this year? Do you have a priority list for landscape projects? Our priority list kind of falls into place on its own, it seems like. Yeah. So it just... it's based on how how many people we can get out to do certain things that we're not either good at or can't do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it just kind of everything just falls into place how it should, I guess. I don't really have a lineup for projects. I feel bad the like the grass space out there. I don't want more space to mow. No, the sprinkler system isn't going to work mm-hmm. the way that it was designed. We would have to put a new sprinkler system. Well, all in. the pipes are cut at this point. Yeah, and I don't want to. So I don't want to pay to put in new pipes just because we don't have like a full idea. So the grass is going to grow up tall. It's going to look like a pasture out there. It's not going to be pretty this year. No, neither will. Okay. I'm fine with it. Neither The dirt lands, like the grass in front of yeah. the Persephone garden will turn to look like the dirt lands until we can get all of everything figured out. Yeah. So and you have just, to go through the proper avenues to get, you know, all the proper things in place so that yeah. you can use your property the way that you want to, or, right. or maybe you need to adapt to move it a diff- to use it a different way. So anyway, we're just kind of waiting on all that. I just don't want to be rushed yeah. into coming up with a design and right. I don't, I also don't want to do it twice. No, for sure. Sherry said, do you ever use root stimulator on the trees you move? Just wondering. I used to all the time and I don't know why I stopped using it. I don't really think about it. I think just using the biotone because that's uh, like mixed specifically for root development. That's been all we've really needed. Everybody kind of has their own thing yeah. that... It's, it's hard to really, you know, when it comes to moving things like that, it's hard to say what really works or doesn't. You just kind of start using the things that other people talk highly of mm-hmm. because it's like, unless you have an A-B test, mm-hmm. it's hard to really know what, if the root stem is working better than, yeah. you know, whatever else you're using. Right. Looking for sure said, what is the reason for adding berms specifically here? Will you add them on the rest of the property at some point? Well, back there, it just seems natural because there already is one there and we can just build that one up. It'll also help us create a little bit of elevation for more of a hedge qu- quicker because I do think we want to move high tunnels, not right up next to the fence, but somewhere back in this area, they'll end up. And so I want to have some privacy for not for us but for the na- for the neighbors sake i want there to be a nice thing for them to look at because that's that's what i would want for myself <laughs> from neighbors yeah yeah i think we talked about that last time did we <laughs> i think so uh, jane said are you still having the aquascape team come back to put in a stream extension to the pond or is this something i mixed up with someone else you did not mix it up with somebody else in fact part of the team is gonna be here next two weeks from now yeah not to do a project, but we're going to be... Well, they have to... Um, we're going to be mapping it out. Yeah. Yeah. Come up with a plan. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. What kind of flower bed will be beside the barn? Perennials? There'll be a mix. I think we want to put a weeping Alaskan kind of in the corner. I Don't do. say we. Don't say we. You, you wanted it too, right? No, I have I have definite uh, like Oh, he wants ideas. to block the barn. He doesn't want to see it. But I think there's some charm in that this yeah. old barn. I don't know. We'll Go see. Go for it. We'll see how it goes. What if I covered the sides with like climbing roses and like masked it a little bit? 
Is that what you want to do? That's what I could do. No, I like the barn. I don't really feel a need to I cover I it. like the barn. I don't like that view of the barn, personally. Hmm. I think the side view is the worst but, view. But I think, Aaron, on the right-hand side of the lane that goes next to the barn to get back behind it, I think that's going to be so heavily planted that when you're sitting at the pond, you won't see the barn. But as you go closer to the barn, it'll open up a little bit more so we're not blocking the windows. You can still see out the windows and see some yeah. beautiful things and the lane and then like whatever is mass planted around the stream. I don't, it's not the windows. Like I envision, I'm, it's the I, roof for you. Yeah, I envision like a pine. So you're going to have a trunk and then you're going to have this like 30 foot tall pine next to the barn. Um, and you'll see like the windows will be exposed. You keep thinking that the wind, like, it's not about the windows for you me. You wanted it's about... to plant a bunch of mallad trees, da, 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 <laughs> well, right, we, right along the barn. We can't. For I know multiple reasons, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, I want I want big trees to block the barn yeah. from basically any vantage point. I mean, on that side. Yeah, I think it will be in the end. You can count. But you're not going to plant can't. trees. No, I'm going to plant trees. Okay. Just trust me. <laughs> okay. Why can't you just explain it though? I can't. Because like, you I and I have... don't, we don't, we don't communicate on the same wavelength no, about we ideas. Don't. I don't, we do not. I don't yeah. feel like, I don't feel like you, do you feel like you're communicating? Like when you express what you want to do, do you actually feel in your mind like I express that as adequately as anyone could possibly express it? Yes. <laughs> do you really? Because yeah. I'm always left with like, you threw out a bunch of possibilities and you never landed on anything you actually definitively want because I don't do a plan that's probably why like in my mind everything works out like you yeah. just figure it out everything works out and it ends up being nice and you know we might have to move one or two things along the way because I didn't get it quite right but in the end I think it'll be good I think when I'm trying to explain like impart a vision to someone I want to give them the goal of what I'm shooting for mm-hmm. so that they can understand you know why I'm doing something mm-hmm. and then like a Maybe I don't give it exactly definitive, mm-hmm. but I'm like, we could put a locust or a pine or a tall juniper or... Or we being a lost conceder. I gave you a definite. Well, that's so narrow. So it's like that plus feet. what other five trees are you going to plant? Other things that are pretty. Because <laughs> like a pine will take up a ton of space. Yeah. But a weeping Alaskan is going to take up like four. Fifteen. A wide? Yeah. Oh, am I thinking of the wrong plant? Yep. Weeping Alaskan cedar. Jubilee, the one I planted gets twelve. So their one gets 15. Really? Yes, sir. I'm thinking of the wrong plant then. See? You just don't know your trees. No, I don't know my <laughs> trees apparently. How, and how tall do they get? 25. Do you approve? Well, okay. So what other... So 15 doesn't cover the whole thing. No. What other What other three trees are you going to plant? Or one or two that are big enough? I, I got to get my anchor plant in and then I can figure out the rest. <laughs> the problem is, is it takes you like three years to find your other plant. Maybe. But that is because there's so many other projects going on. I plant stuff everywhere. I mean, you guys see it, right? <laughs> like, yeah. there's just, there's always activity. It's like not because I am. It's not because you're ing- not doing right? stuff. <laughs> yeah. You're a busy girl. Some days. <laughs> Hotel designer said, how many years would you estimate max tree height width? Oh, geez. On um, the honey locust? Pfft, I don't think I could give you an average. Yeah. Trees I just throw, throw a year out. Yeah. I don't know. I, it just depends on the type of tree. I mean, if you're talking to the honey locust, it could be. You that probably long. see like pretty close to max, maybe like 15 to 20 years. Maybe it depends on if it likes it. You yeah, know? it's true. That there's so many different factors. Is it getting enough sun? Is it getting enough water? Is it getting proper care? You know, all of those things. That's a really hard question. It's kind of like how much water do you give this plant? Yeah. You know, it's so different for, you know, depending on where you're at, what your soil composition is. Two gallons every. 36 hours. I wish that you could answer it that way for sure. Okay, last video is pinching snapdragons, simple spring containers, and transplanting iris. So we started at the greenhouse, we pinched our snapdragons. I show you how I do that and why we do that. We went around and filled up some containers with just pansies, and I just love it. It's just so fresh and just colorful, but not complicated. And then there was a big patch of iris right in the area where the lane is also going. So we got those all dug up and uh, Katie, a fr- my friend Katie texted me. She's like, they are black. She screenshot, did a screenshot of the, so she was watching that mm. video and I said, I don't know. I think they're a black iris, but they might be white or yellow. I'll have to watch a tour. And she watched it and found it and nice. took a screenshot to send me. So they are that super, so dark purple. They look black. They're really pretty. 
Um, Judy Graham said, thank you so much for pointing out the boxwoods with winter burn. I have two in my hedge, which look the same, and I was concerned that something else was going on. I've never had boxwoods before. Should I be wrapping them with burlap for the winter? Do people wrap burlap, uh, box, boxwoods? I don't know. I think in uh, harsh climates they do. Yeah. That might not be a bad idea. Uh, you know, it depends on how old they are, too. If they're baby baby ones that aren't quite as established with a good root system. That could be part of the issue. They might get too dry, too. And I think we've got a lot of like boxes and containers that just stay too dry in the winter. And so like the wind side, it just didn't have enough moisture in their leaves. And so they're all winter, like dried mm -hmm. out winter burn on them, which had they had more moisture in the pots, they probably wouldn't have done that. So it just, there's so many different things that could be affecting that. But our boxes aren't looking as bad as I thought. Mm. I think they're just like coming out of their bronze. I thought the green velvets weren't supposed to do that as much. Ah, yeah. Katie did said, are they painting the barn and chicken coop too? No. Um, the chicken coop could probably use a fresh coat, um, but the barn was painted two years ago yeah. or so, so it's pretty good. Same color. Deb Briggs said, can you clip back iris in spring? I was always told to do it after they bloom in the fall. Will it matter? Oh, geez. Well, I've done both, and they bloom at the same time every year, no matter what. Gail said, can you plant the kale by seed? Never seen any in my area. You can, there's a pretty strict grow, uh, growing regimen though, in terms of like once they germinate, and it, they need to be grown on at this specific temperature in order to you know keep that nice compact shape. So it's something that I actually have some ornamental kale seed um, that I should get going for this, for this next fall season at some point and kind of show you guys the process that I go through because I really haven't done much with that either. Um, but yeah, can be done. Judy said, do thrips live in the ground? If they do, will they still get in the flowers that you covered? Um, they could, that area was cleaned out fairly well. We do uh, have some more biologicals coming. Uh, so we're gonna do another uh, overhead application, but we're also gonna do some, their packets that you hang. So I could hang them right to the um, little low cat, um, whatever hoops I could hang them right inside and they're kind of like a slow release the biological the mites come out really slow um, and it's not a spider mite like the type that eats your plant they're a carnivorous type that eat thrips and white flies specifically Deb said who's having Easter dinner we're going to church in the morning and then at one o'clock we're at my family's house for lunch and then at five o'clock we're at your family's house for dinner it's gonna be a full day and it's gonna be so fun the kids will get to see all of their cousins we'll do egg hunts at both houses and we'll get to be with all of our family we're looking forward to it. And the very last video is spring fertilizing day. We just, once a year, try to get a video out there in the spring when we do our big fertilizing day, just to show you what we use, how we apply it. Um, and it was a, it was a group a effort. Lot. Well, and Bethany came in. Yeah. I always feel bad because she ends up coming into videos later on, you yeah. know, and I think she's gonna be doing something else, but she ends up with time. And so I never say in the video, like Paul's, you know, gonna be helping us out instead of Paul and Bethany, but Bethany does a lot of it too. Um, and so it was all four of us out there fertilizing, getting it done. Chris, our fan said, I also have some boxes and containers, never thought about fertilizing them too. Thanks for the reminder. Should I still fertilize even if they have annuals in the same container? Um, I would give them a little boost right now with a slow release. And once you put annuals in there, then I would do your weekly annual fertilizer. Eva said, love your house, your garden, your two lovely children, you both, Laura and Aaron, and all the incredible videos you create. That's so sweet. Question, why is your irrigation not on? Too early in spring, but your last frost is over, right? Yeah, I, I think our last frost is, it's possible we could get one in April. Our average last frost date is April 29th. We haven't had a frost for a week, 10 days, at least. The answer to the question is that we don't need to run it. No, not yet. We get enough rain in the spring that we, we can last into rain. May usually yeah. without it on. It gets more difficult because we have more pots going and we have, you know, and it's nice to have water on so you have quicker access to stuff. There's been some years where it's been really dry, but yeah. not the last two or three. Right. User said, do you never feed the daffodils or tulips? I think there is a bulb tone. Do you use it only when planting? Love your channel. You guys are all great. Um, we do fertilize. Uh, I don't know that we hit it every single year, but you use bulb tone right after they're done blooming because that's when the bulb is recharging for next year. So the the foliage is still up it's still looking green it's still soaking in you know sunshine creating that energy build up feeding them at that point really boosts them up and gets them gets them going mbd said a paul question it seems like paul can do anything I'm pretty certain he probably could he's willing to jump in on just yeah. and like the thing i love about paul is if you ask him to do something he hasn't done i see him go and he just like pulls up a youtube video he figures it out yeah yeah he's or like he'll call um mm -hmm. he'll call around town like if 
you know. Yeah, he's not afraid to go out there and search for, you know, yeah, and talk like, to Yeah, like, oh, we need to rent a thing. You know, if it's like, if you need to get something done, he'll just like, oh, we could probably rent something to do this right. or that or whatever. Did he come with a wealth of landscape slash gardening knowledge or is he a quick study? He's definitely a quick study. I think he came with a lot of farm kid kind of knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, when you grow up kind of doing that sort of thing, there's a different kind of mindset. Uh, a lot of common sense. And just like mechanical, he his cars are his passion um, and he likes like working on his cars yeah uh, and i think that's kind of how his brain works which works out great for us really hard worker both of them wendy said how come you never speak of the aroma of the tones <laughs> i don't know we talk about it like um i always say it's the smell of success yes it is definitely the smell of success <sighs> they some are, are worse than others yeah i'm so used to them though now like whenever i do biotone it's just like yeah it's just biotone do you remember when we went to the Espoma like, that factory? That was overwhelming. Yeah. I don't know if I'd be able to work there. Although maybe you just get used to it. I think you probably do. Yeah. But yeah. It was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. That is it for today's recap. Remember, we are giving a hose link away. So leave your comment down below and we will choose a winner and let... We'll choose a winner as long as you're nice. Yeah. And we will update the description of this video with the winner's name. So if you get some kind of a message that you're questioning, we'll probably let it, the giveaway go for about a week or so. Yeah. Right? And yeah. then we'll update our description with the winner's name. So try to go to the description of this video to verify that you are actually the winner. Do not respond to anybody that looks fishy because there's so many of also, that. Also, uh, so your much of that going on. comment will be pinned yeah. at the top of this video. Perfect. Whoever wins. Perfect. So. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you're having a great day. Have a great week and we will see you in the next video. Bye.